So I was cooking my anniversary dinner and this happened. Life throwing me a curveball. I was home alone and literally decided I wanted to try and slice my thumb off. Yeah, it bled so bad I thought I was going to pass out. But I got it under control somewhat until my husband got home. Good thing nobody else saw this blood because they probably would have passed out. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So with winter fast approaching, I am trying to store up as much food as I can for the winter as well as rotating through my short term pantry. So I came across a few sources that have been pushed to the back and obviously got overlooked. So who knew a thumb was so important to doing things? It's been two weeks, but it is healing nicely, but it has held me back. And I can't let it hold me back anymore. I'm going to do what I need to do. So these are the skillet sauces I found in the back of my working kitchen pantry, actually. And they are... Um, chicken, you just add your chicken and maybe a few other vegetables and you have a meal. So what I'm going to try to do is use these for canning up some chicken. And I don't know if you can see that, but yes, they have expired. If you can see the date, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a long time out. But I did try one and they are still good. So I'm going to try this and see if it works. I'm probably going to do pints just in case and not try to put all my eggs in one basket, so to speak. So yeah, these ones are expired as well. <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you the date. If you can read it, you can read it. If you can't, just know they are expired. But yeah, so I'm going to try and do these and see how far I get with these sauces. And I did find a great deal on chicken this week. It's crazy, these chicken prices. So I found in my local small grocer, uh, chicken, boneless, skinless chicken breast for $1.88 a pound, which in this area is good because they've been like three plus dollars a pound. So of course, I'm starting out with washing my chicken. And today I'm using lemon juice. Sometimes I use uh, distilled white vinegar, but lemon juice was right there. So that's what I'm using today. And I'm washing my chicken really good. If you don't wash your chicken, you don't wash your chicken. I'm a chicken washer. And this is primarily the reason why. Do you see what's coming off this chicken? I don't want that in my food. I don't care what they say at whatever, you know, kitchen or wherever they say you don't have to wash your chicken i'm washing mine so i washed it cut it up and i am ready to go we're gonna make chicken marsala the first um the first uh jars and then i'm going to go into the next one and then i want to stretch it a little bit i have some broth here and this is vegetable broth because I couldn't find any chicken. That was, um, I'm trying to rotate my store board. I'm not using my home can. I'm doing my store board. So I'm just adding the actual Marcella uh, packet to my broth to make enough to hopefully fill an entire can with this particular uh, chicken uh, recipe. So let's see how far I get. So all I did was just pour the packet. As you can see, it has mushrooms, all the stuff in it, seasonings, all that in it already. So I don't have to add any of that in with my broth. And I'm just going to be filling my jars with the chicken. I'm probably going to fill it about three-fourths of the way or maybe half of the way with chicken. That's why I'm using pints because it's a quick meal, uh, maybe for lunch for one person or two people. Or if I want to do it for the whole family, open up two or three. And I figured that would be nice that way if hubby wants a... Uh, lunch he could just do that and it would be a meal so i filled up the chicken and i'm just putting all the onions and mushrooms this is what this one calls for and then i am pouring over the broth and it wouldn't be a canning project if i didn't make a mess and this is no exception i am making a mess i don't know if you can see that but my liquid is going all down the sides of the jar i probably should have used a funnel yeah i should have gotten out a funnel but this is my canning project and as you can see I've made a mess so I'm just making sure I debubble 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 really important debubbling wiping your ribs and keeping everything clean so your jars seal correctly so I'm just making sure I debubble and my next step will be to wipe my ribs and as you can see 
it looks actually i will say at this point it smells really good for being as expired as it was it smells really good and i did we did uh make one as i said and it was really good so even though the maybe the nutritional value might have been less the taste was still there so i don't know you set your own risk i guess it's up to you what you want to do but things do last past the expiration date that is stamped on the package or the jar or the tin or whatever now here i have my lids warming up with some warm water not boiling but warm they say you don't have to do this step but i like to just to ensure a tight seal so this is my last two jars that i have to go in putting on my lids after i've wiped the ribs and i always struggle with this one tightening of those um, rigs sometimes i get it right sometimes i don't so into the canner they go so i want everything to be about the same temperature it goes my last jar my canner is about room temp my jars were room temp my meat was a little cold and my broth was about room temp um, I did heat it up and then brought it back down a little bit. It was sort of lukewarm. It wasn't quite room temp, but everything all in all with the chicken being on, on the colder side because it was out of the fridge, then it kind of was, everything was the same temp, including the water in my canner. Now you see I'm trying to put on my top and it pops up the valve. That's because one of my jars is blocking it. It's closed, but you don't want to do that. You want to jostle or move your jars around a little bit so when you put that top on it does not pop that valve up so i've just uh rearranged my jars making sure it doesn't um impede that valve any and then i'm just going to put it back on and as you can see my valve does not pop up when i close it and i'm going to bring the temp up really slowly on this because everything was kind of lukewarm sort of on the cooler side and I don't want to jar the jars. Finding the sweet spot on this glass top stove took a bit of a learning curve but raising the temp slowly helped quite a bit. So the next one I did was the Sicilian chicken. It called for mushrooms and onions as well and I only did four jars of this because I only had one of these packets left and this is it it looks and smells really good so i'm going to actually put this in my small electric canna and do it that way because even with the other packets i won't have enough to fill up my 23 quart canner and i like to run a full canner i am debubbling as really important step wipe the ribs put on the lids and jars and into the kettle so the 20 pounds of chicken i bought wasn't enough to do all the packets so this is the last one i'm going to be doing it's barbecue chicken and i'm going to be doing a small batch of this because i only have one packet so yeah and this recipe calls for peppers and onions but i don't have any peppers at the moment so i'll write a little note on the label to add them when i cook it and these Chicken breasts are maybe the biggest chicken breasts I have ever seen in my entire life. So this is what the barbecue chicken looks like. I'm not filling it up all the way because I'm thinking that the chicken will make a little bit of broth itself. So I'm filling it just under the one inch headspace it calls for. So this is what I got. 20 uh, jars of the chicken marcella, four jars of the barbecue chicken, and four jars of the Sicilian chicken. Now, one of the barbecue chicken didn't seal, so we had that for dinner the next night. And all in all, I will say this was a great project, a great add to my pantry for winter. And one thing, the last packet I did do, this is the stir fry. I'm actually going to do that. I had a bit of the masala left over. And what I did was put it into these silicone cupcake liners and freeze it. And I could use it for bouillon or whatever or just make chicken masala through the winter. And that's what I'm going to be doing with the stir fry when I make stir fry. So here I am doing the barbecue chicken. I make a roux for nine times out of 10 I cook. So that's what I did. I'm gonna put it over white rice. And here is the barbecue chicken. I'm going to strain off the liquid into my um, roux to get that going. And that is basically just equal parts 
butter, margarine, uh, lard, whatever you have to flour. And I use all-purpose flour. And it doesn't have to be exact, but close. And as you can see, it makes sort of like a sauce. Because that's what it is. To thicken up what's in my jar. And that's how I'm going to stretch it as well. There isn't a lot of meat in here. I probably wish I would have put more meat. But if just one meal, maybe a quick lunch or something like that, then yeah, it's a great thing to have. And I'm going to actually stretch this a little bit with some caramelized onions from the pantry. And as you can see, yeah, I'm having a bit of time getting it out of here. But anyway, you got the gist. Um, you can add veggies more meat or whatever you want meat is the expensive thing so maybe not more meat maybe some lentils or some mushrooms or something like that and i'm adding onions to stretch this meal and this is just going to be for tonight so we don't have to have a whole lot of it it's not something i'm anticipating having leftovers and at this point we won't i already know that and i'm going to serve it with a side of veg or a salad Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when I upload videos. Thank you very much and have a great day.